Another great week of area high school football is in the books. Here's a look back at last Friday's action on Fox 7 Friday Football. Let's get it going with the battle of week one winners up in Cedar Park. Both Bowie and Vista Ridge were impressive on the road last week with double digit wins. Fourth straight season, the Rangers and Bulldogs have met in non district play. This one at Gupton Stadium. Bowie out of the gate quickly. Cruz Tello finds Owen Ball for the first TD of the night. 17 yards to give the Dogs a 10 0 lead. Then the defense comes up big. Bowie's Aiden Solis with the pick. Then six more. Dogs score the game's first 17 points. Check your score right now. They're in the fourth quarter. Bowie up 30 to 21. All right, to Gupton Stadium now where Cedar Park, a 5A team, is facing Vandergriff, a 6A squad as these two continue their longtime rivalry. Now, the Vipers have won the last three between these two by an average of 35 a game. Cedar Park's Trey Hill, not trying to hear all that. He takes that one in from 35 yards out. T Wolves up 7 0 in the first. Vandergriff. Going to tie it in the second quarter. Check out Thomas Buschler. After the catch, gets a guy off and then starts breaking tackles left and right. He will not be denied. Scores from 43 yards out later on. Vipers QB Miles to Decky. Chunging this one to the back of the end zone. George Farley comes down with it. This one is in overtime right now. Cedar Park, though, leading Vandegrift 43-35. Losing to Anderson in the Taco Sh Shack Bowl last week. It's back-to-back -back rivalry games from McCallum Knights who turned their attention to the Battle of the Bell in week two. Now McCallum has had the bell for quite some time. They haven't lost a rival Travis since 2010, but the Rebels looking to show they're a much improved program these days. First quarter Knights quarterback Luke Dunham keeps this one himself, finds the end zone from 25 yards out, puts McCallum up 7-0 a little later. Gonna buy some time here. Chunk it deep to Jaden Boo. That one going for 67 yards. Knights now up 14 zips, still in the first. And yeah, they weren't done as those two hook up again for another score. This one, all McCallum early as they go up 21 nothing at that point. Right now in the third, McCallum up big, 42 to 14. Well, Lake Travis with its home opener tonight. The Cavs coming off a successful week one trip to Arlington. Next week, they'll load the buses and head out to Midland to take on Midland Legacy. So between last week's three and a half hour road trip and next week's five hour roadie, you know LT is happy to be home facing a solid rock wall squad who gonna strike first on this long touchdown toss here. But Lake Travis ties it up at seven apiece thanks to some tough running from junior running back Van Hopping here, carrying a couple of defenders into the end zone. Rockwall out of the Dallas area showing they have a nice running game as well. Jameer Wilson cruises into the end zone there a little later. LT ties it back up as Chaston Ditta hits Lark Soddle down the middle for the 16 yard score. Cavs led at 21-70 at the break right now in the third. Lake Travis leading that one. That's close. 31-28. Down at Bob Shelton Stadium. A pair of week one winners going head to head as the 1-0 Johnson Jaguars hosting Stony Point, who knocked off Eastview last week. Johnson down seven early when Kale Hatnot gets loose, gets into the end zone from 20 yards out. That ties it up at seven apiece. Stony Point answers in the second quarter. Quarterback Kenneth Calvis, the short touchdown toss to Coca. Frierson there, a nice leap to get into the end zone. Tigers up 14-7. Seesaw battle here. Jags answer. Quarterback Zach Isaac throws this one right into your living room at, and right at Fox 7. Photog, your Zane Peralta, Preston Shelton with a nice over-the-shoulder catch. That ties it at 14. Right now in the fourth quarter, Johnson up 35-24. Let's now check in on the winning side of the Taco Shack Bowl, the Anderson Trojans, who rolled into Elgin a week after beating rival McCallum. This is Anderson's last chance to prep for district play, which begins next week against state-ranked College Station. Meanwhile, Elgin Trying not to lose back-to-back -back games at home to start the season after falling to Hayes in week one. Anderson sophomore running back Jay Fulmore not trying to let that happen as he gives the Trojans a 14-0 lead there in the first quarter right now in the third. Anderson leading this one over Elgin big 41-7. Here's a look at last Friday's Fox 7 Friday football game of the week. We'll start things off with a relatively new rivalry between Rouse and Liberty Hill. It's the Panthers home opener after suffering a week one road loss to 6A state power Cibolo Steel. Now Rouse is 1-0, beat Liberty Hill by double digits last year, but they were down big 21-3 to the Panthers in the second until Anthony Reyes scores there. Then with four minutes before the break, the Raiders cut it to a five-point game on that touchdown toss to Mason Rieger. Liberty Hill gets things rolling again a few minutes later as Kyle May scores from 15 yards out. Panthers now 27-16 at that point, but with about 40 seconds to go in the first half, Rouse answers this time. London Morgan 
with a nice throw and catch to Cameron Cook. That cuts the Panthers' lead to 27-24 at the break. This one is close right now. Liberty Hill up 33-31 in the fourth.